Coming up on this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society, Elephant Mark, Elephant Patrick, it's dangerous to go alone, so the Nintendo Cartridge Society goes with you. Welcome to Nintendo Cartridge Society. My name is Patrick Ellers, and I am joined, as I am always joined, by my co-host, Mark Mitchell. Mark, how's it going this morning? <laughs> it's going great. I honestly feel a little bit overwhelmed with the y amount yes. of Mario stuff that we just learned. I, it, it's, uh, it's like learning that there's a new flavor of your favorite ice cream, yes. right? That, uh -huh. Yes, where you're like, oh, there, there are more things I have to learn. There are more details I have to wrap my head around. We've seen now uh, a grand total of 17 minutes, I guess, uh, of the game between its, its trailer and the 15 minutes we saw now. Um, and yeah, lots of info to get to. So let's not screw around. Mark, um, let's just remind people they can go to our Patreon if they would like to support us. If you do so at the 8 or 16-bit levels, you get access to uh, our miniseries NCS Detective Club and NCS Goes Broadway. Um, we're about to talk about Les Mis on NCS Goes Broadway, but check that out if you're interested. Uh, we appreciate everyone who does. Um, and uh, the other thing you can do is you can join our Discord, uh, which you can do by emailing us at Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com. Gmail uh, and that's where people are having great conversations about this most recent Super Mario Brothers Wonder Direct uh, as we speak, Mark. It's happening right now, um, but it also happens all the time. So uh, get in there. Everyone is super fun, super friendly, um, and it's a great place to talk about Nintendo stuff. Um, Mark, should we just uh, get into the main course and talk about this uh, Direct? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Today, August 31st, 7 a.m. Pacific Time, 15 minutes of Super Mario Brothers Wonder in a Super Mario Brothers Wonder Direct. Um, Mark, I guess before we start digging into details, um, where were your expectations for this Direct? Where, your, where were your expectations for this game? And did the Direct meet those expect either set of expectations? Yeah, I would say I... I uh, was super excited for the direct. I'm obviously very excited for Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Like I talked about before, uh, when the game was first revealed back in June, it feels like a milestone when you have a new type of Super Mario Brothers game, right? A yes, new form. Yes. So, you know, we had the original flavor. We've had the move to 3D. We've had like 3D Land, 3D World. But and we've had new, and the new games, new Super yeah. Mario Brothers. But really, like for 2D, you've had the uh, original, like 8-bit, 16-bit games. You had new Super, and then a long break, and then new Super Mario Brothers, and then a long break of new new Super Mario Brothers games. Yep. And now we have Super Mario Brothers Wonder, and uh, it. So we're recording this right after the direct ended. And I feel like there's still so much I need to wrap my head around. In this 15 minutes, it was so packed. Yes. I mean, real, really, really jam-packed. Uh, uh, Adrian Holmes in our Discord uh, pointed out, like, hey, why aren't they just calling this Super Mario Brothers 5? Um, which I think is, like, a, a valid question, except, like, maybe they want to make additional Super Mario Brothers Wonder Games. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're, this game's not even out, but there's so much to <laughs> there. There is so much to think about. It's yeah. like, is this the start, or is it like a? Uh, are we going to see with 2D Mario what we see with 3D Mario, where there's an entry in a certain style? Yeah, maybe a sequel in the case of Galaxy, but then they move on to something else. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a it's a, it's a great question. I mean, it's it's one of those like things with uh nintendo where it's like you know they just keep putting out mario and zelda games everything they put out is mario and zelda but it's like i, I don't know this the super mario brothers wonder does feel like it could be um the beginning of or the sole entry in like its own franchise right let me ask let me uh ask you yeah. before we get any further what were your expectations um for the direct and for the game and how are you feeling now 
Um, so I think my expectations, uh, not expectations necessarily, but just like my sort of uh, hopes, l- we're positioned right here at almost September where I'm like used to like chemically dependent on a, <laughs> a big Nintendo Direct that like blows my mind. Um, and I would say that this wasn't that so much as it was showing me a Mario game that I'm very interested in playing. Um, and like... Honestly, if if this 15 minutes were anchoring a direct that was full of like, you know, crappy little uh, third party things and like a handful of like kind of maybe interesting indies, I, I probably would be like, that was a great direct. Um, so I don't know why I don't just uh, shut my mouth and say this is a great direct. <laughs> Do, does it seem like it could have been at one point part of a larger direct because it just kind of like ends really abruptly. And it kind of just starts, too. Like, I, I know it, it starts with, like, voiceover being like, here's the story of the game. Which, look, guys, pointless. We don't need <laughs> <laughs> Hey, guess what? Bowser showed up. Guess what? Bowser showed up and he stole something and now everyone wants to stop him from being bad. <laughs> this is normal. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it definitely does feel like, uh, you know, the, the, there was no... Um, you know, we're we're still waiting on a uh, that that video message. Oh my gosh, from, that's right, uh, Miyamoto. Yeah, and um, Charles Martinet to sort of be like, what, I mean, we don't know what that video is. It was some sort of video message? I assume it's just like a sweet goodbye kind of thing. So, yeah, I forgot that they teased or not teased it. They straight up said it was coming, and then yeah. we haven't. It, and it made. I guess it doesn't make sense really for it to be part of this direct, especially now that we know what it is. Do you think? That mm. since he's like Mario ambassador, do you think it'll be at um, Nintendo Live that starts tomorrow? Because I, I mean, yeah. Because I also wondered if like the reason maybe this was part of a larger direct at some point, or they like created it. And I'm assuming the way directs are made is they have a bunch of segments for stuff, and then they like figure out what's going where. And I wonder yeah, if totally. they decided to make this this own thing. Obviously, I mean, we're recording this right afterwards. But do you think it will be? It could be playable at Nintendo Live, and that's why they yeah. wanted to do it now. I mean that 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 is that is my guess, um, and, and also why um, like Nintendo's presence at Gamescom was also weird. Um, that they were there, but didn't like all they were, all they had uh, at Gamescom were like uh mario kart and splatoon and like uh, games that have been out for uh 10 years or a a whole year or whatever um and then uh like that they just sort of like missed the timing on uh like coinciding with the super mario brothers wonder um direct uh so yeah i i it's my hope that it's playable at nintendo live at least like in some sort of vertical um, but you know, we, we, we don't, we don't really know what Nintendo live is, is going to look like, even though it starts tomorrow. Also, it's crazy to me that this game comes out in October 20th. That's not that yeah. many weeks away. No, 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 no. It's, uh, it's uh, a month and a half basically. Um, uh, uh, all right, Mark. So should, should we then, uh, just dive in here sort of linearly and talk about, uh, what they presented us with? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so uh, the the first, like I, I, I sort of teased already, is there. It starts with like the little story chunk, the little setup, and instead of uh, Mario having a cake, he's like going for a walk with his friends. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in in the Flower Kingdom, so bam, we've got a new uh, a new area, we've got a new world that uh, Mario and friends are going to be exploring. It's the Flower Kingdom. It is just beyond the Mushroom Kingdom. Um, they've been invited by Prince Florian. Uh, who's that little worm guy that we've been seeing? Uh, Mark, I love a good worm guy. I love a little worm guy. Is this the same worm guy that we see like in the rest of the presentation? They don't call him out, but he seems to be like riding in your hair or on your shoulder or something. Or is this yeah, like he, his little brother? He, it's it's unclear in in the uh, the key art for the direct. Um, it's riding on Luigi's back. Okay. Um, I've I've got the uh I've got the the stream up on my TV and the the I I can see um this little I guess it probably is him it's he's wearing the crown and everything so oh yeah um, I see yeah. I see yeah so uh you know, heads up we've got new royalty in the Mario world it's <laughs> Prince Florian um someday we'll rank royalty in in Mario Mark write that down <laughs> <laughs> I am writing it down. Uh, Bowser, of course, he shows up, he touches a wonder flower and merges with Prince Florian's castle. Um, now Bowser has stolen castles before he's flown away with them. Mark, has he ever merged with them before? I think so. I think this is the first time that Bowser has like become a previously inanimate object. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like uh, it's like Bowser becomes a transformer. Yes. Um. So I mean, the story setup. Uh, who cares? The world looks cute, right? It does. We even get like. Uh, so one thing that I think about is interesting about this game that we've seen so far is it has a lot of the classic like Mario elements like Koopa Troopas and Goombas and yep. all of that. And then it also introduces a whole bunch of new enemies and characters and things like that that are like, uh, or at least character wise, this kingdom, the Flower Kingdom doesn't seem to have toads. It seems to have poplins, which are yes. like toads, like very much like toads, but not toads. I wonder what they sound like when they talk. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's really, right. <laughs> they're just a little low version. <laughs> I really, I, I, I like the, uh, the simple like A to B of like we are originally in the mushroom kingdom. We are now in the flower kingdom. What used to be mushrooms is now flowers, um, and that it's just like a one to one, right? Um, so like the people who are used to be toads, which are like little dudes with mushroom heads, now they're little dudes with seed heads because they're for flowers and not for mushrooms. Um, it's just it's. Such a simple like tweaking of a thing that is uh, not like wildly reinventing, but like it's it's a lot like um, Mark. Remember in our discussion about uh, Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword that we were like, oh, we're being introduced to like all these uh, creatures that are just like like the the uh, there's those mole people that live in the Elden Volcano area, and like yeah, we'll get Gorons too, but like each of the races are now like replaced by like a different. Uh, kind of creature um, and uh, that that kind of thing is just like so fun and inventive and like blows up the world in such a fun and exciting way yeah they also start like running down the worlds we can expect to see in the flower kingdom so they call out that there's six distinct worlds that circle the petal isles which means you have a total of seven areas to explore and then they run down four of the names the they, yeah, they name four of them, and then the other three, they're like, it's kind of like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it's Pipe Rock Plateau is where you start out, then you make your way to Fluff Peak, Fluff Puff Peaks, Shining Falls, Petal Isles, and that's where the names run out. And then you just, yeah. you know, you got a desert with white sands, un an uncanny forest looking area, and forest then is not canny. and then Magma World. Uh, which we have to assume is uh, like the the Bowser um, area, right? Mm, at the, yeah, at the center of, of of these uh, of the Petal I I Islands. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a, a, a and you know, as, as they're showing all these things, like the the design on all of them seems very uh, cool and very like distinct. Um, I I don't know how much this goes beyond the like sort of regular um, Mario. Um, like there's a forest world, there's a, a you know desert, water, uh, you know the the sort of the normal Mario biomes, right? Yeah, it will be interesting to see because you know obviously there's the wonder seed of it all as well that we'll talk about in a yes. little bit, and so to see how because even like the uh, uncanny forest, it does not it's not like like you said it's not a canny forest, it's not a normal looking forest, but we've seen <laughs> sure. we we've seen stuff like that before, but it will be interesting to see how the wonder seeds kind of like change that yeah um, totally i also thought it was interesting so they call out that there are these uh it looks like most of the world map is a traditional kind of like super mario brothers 3 or really new super mario brothers style yeah you know uh linear world map and then there are also open areas that look like they're borrowing from super mario 3d world where you can just kind of like run around and yeah play levels in kind of like pick and choose whatever order you want to do it in. Well, but uh, uh, unlike Super Mario 3D World, you still have to approach those levels in order, right? Like those, uh, you, you can like free run around the, the world in Super Mario 3D World, but you can't uh, like get to one level until you have uh, beaten the level previous to it. It looks like in this, you can, I, and I think they're all the same area that it's like, uh, it all appears like linear but at any point, you can just jump off the line and approach another level within that world. Was my read on it? Oh, interesting. Yeah, I, uh, I'm not. I'm not sure. My read on it was that they're it, they're kind of like discrete areas. There's oh, interesting. The linear part, and then there's these open areas with almost like optional challenges. But yeah, I'm not sure. That'll be interesting to learn more about. Uh, and then there's also, you know, on, on, on top of that, you can select war, uh, different levels that you want to go into from a courses menu. So if you don't want to navigate the uh, 
um, the the world there you can just select from uh, from a menu, which is convenient. They also, t you know, call out what was the our introduction to Super Mario Brothers Wonder in the June Direct, which is a the talking flowers. Yeah. Now I recall your initial response to the talking flowers was, "I don't want these guys talking too much." <laughs> I st that's still how I feel. Okay, I don't, you I went in pre annoyed, <laughs> so I just wanted to check in and see how you're feeling about them now. I do think it's interesting that they like you can interact with them. So they'll sometimes they can give you stuff if you uh, spray them with water. It seems like things happen. So I, I think that part of it is nice. Um, but it will be interesting. I'm still kind of like, how, but how much are these going to be talking at me? Can I say that I like the voice acting on the flower? Does that make sense? Yeah. That, like, um, it, it, it sounds uh, like it's really giving up performance and isn't like, I don't know. It, it, it feels like the flowers are giving compelling reads every time. So um, I am, I'm going into this uh, with a positive attitude, unlike Mark, who's going in <laughs> so negative. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm I, I I'm I'm looking forward to uh, hearing their little quips and stuff. I feel like uh, you know Nintendo games can be very funny, and so it will be may maybe the yeah. flowers will have really uh, kind of like funny things to say. <clears throat> funny things to say to all of the playable characters, Mark. We got to look at a ton of playable characters in this game. Yes, so we knew Mario, of course, Luigi, Luigi, Peach, Daisy, two Toads to choose from. And a Toadette. Right. So that, so, okay. Uh, I, I don't know. I had not really clocked whether we had seen two different Toads um, in, in the previous trailer. Um, but uh, the Toadette is definitely, uh, definitely news. And then, uh, so those are kind of like your main characters, I guess I would say. Or at least your normal, your base characters. They share, like, similar movesets. They, um... And I th in fact, I think identical move sets. But then yeah, there are right. there are your Yoshi's, your yellow, blue, red, and green Yoshi, and your Nabbits. And those play differently. So Yoshi's can uh, they can eat stuff and then spit it back out at enemies. They can do a flutter. We don't really know what Nabbit's deal is. They don't talk about Nabbit that much, other than whether uh, you can be both a Yoshi and a Nabbit, and they don't take damage so it's kind of like right. the the funky mode of super mario brothers wonder if you're looking for you know like a character maybe for a younger sibling to play or your kids to play um then these could be good options yeah uh, and i and uh like in addition to that the yoshis if you're playing with a yoshi you can hop on them and, and ride the yoshi um, which is something that we saw in the uh, in, in in the previous trailer too, um, but that does seem like m maybe kind of a fun way to um, you know reach uh, different collectibles that you weren't able to before. I, I I think there's I think there's going to be like utility for using these characters beyond just like uh, uh, an easy mode. Um, but it's uh, yeah, it's it's neat to see uh, such a big spread of characters i also like that yoshis can ride other yoshis canonically now yes that's chaotic i don't <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah you know there was there there was a uh leading up to the direct in our discord and elsewhere there was discussion about the yellow yoshi in the yes. super mario brothers wonder key art and that he they did not belong uh, compared yes, to that, all the other characters, yeah. and were they a stand-in for something that was yet to be revealed? And here's the thing: is so the was, was the, the was he standing in for Nabbit? Because Nabbit is added to the key art at the end of the direct, but the yellow Yoshi is still there. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know what's up with that old uh, uh, render of the yellow Yoshi in that like standing on his tippy toes pose. Yeah, maybe. I mean, you got you got to. You got to save time where you can, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> that's true. That's true. You got to save time where you can. Um, uh, uh, all right. Um, uh, Mark, any any characters that you're sad not to see playable? Where's Rosalina? Where's Wario? 
<laughs> Where's Stanley the Bugman? I mean, uh, of course, Stanley the Bugman. How how amazing would that be if Super Mario Brothers Wonder is where they <laughs> is is where they're like, oh yeah, you know, all your friends are here: Luigi, Peach, Daisy, Two Toads, Toadette, Yoshi, Nabbit, and Stanley the Bugman, and just they don't introduce him; they pretend no. everybody knows. <laughs> That's right. Uh, they just hop right in. Uh huh. Um, Mark, I, I forget where exactly it was. It, it may have been in the um, showing us the, the different levels. Um, but uh, we did get a little uh, a little glimpse of um, that uh, Donkey Kong Country Returns slash Tropical Freeze um, trick of uh, seeing the characters in silhouette. Like, um, uh, the, it's just like the black outline of the characters on a like sunsetting background. Um, I just wanted to make sure to call that out before we move past um, the sort of areas um, of, of of the game. Yeah, it, uh, very cool, and it really just makes you wonder what else we haven't what seen. Else is no here, pun, yes. yeah, no pun intended. I, I don't know. It's gonna be pun? impossible. I guess it's not really a pun. I, it's a. Uh, I don't know what it is. It's <laughs> a double entendre. <laughs> I, I don't know a non-sexual double entendre. It's a look. As we speculate a game called speculate about a game called Wonder, uh, we're just going to that's going to happen uh, from time to time. So I, I don't I don't know how to fight that. Um, Mark, then next we're we're introduced to some new enemies um, in kind of some exacting detail, right? Like um, we got to see some of the enemies, we got to see um, what like they do. Um, uh, uh, there there are the uh, we don't need to run down this whole list of, of enemies, right? Um, but like we we saw like hop. Hoppy cats who jump when you jump. Cute. Yeah. Uh, listen, we'll just run down it real quick. Okay. Melon, melon piranha plants, which piranha plants that are watermelons and shoot seeds. Is that what they shoot? I think they were shooting seeds. Um, condarts, uh, they like were shooting little uh, like projectiles at you. Yeah, or they are they are the projectile. They are the projectile. And then there's like uh conks, which again, conks kind of are like uh those poplins to me, where it's like, well, they're not thwomps. Right, they can go through. Goo. These are conks. Uh-huh. Right. These are conks. Um, and and they they also like there there are parts where Mario's like swimming through jelly, Super Mario Land two style, um, and the conks like smash their way through the jelly, destroying it, um, which is interesting. Uh, then there's mumsies. Uh, adorable. I love these. I love these. Uh, they're they're mummies that you like a uh, tall mummies that you unravel by like grabbing their bandages and spinning them around. And this is where some of that like uh, enhanced character animation that we saw in yeah. that in the first trailer really shines because you really get to see you know like Daisy whoever grab the bandage, pull it, and the mummy like spin out. It's really funny. Or the mumsy. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, please, Mark. <laughs> Uh, and then we I, also actually mu- the, the the name sorry, but the name Mumsy does uh, uh, align it with flowers again, right? With mums. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, and then we also have mamas, which I honest I can't remember what those are. Mama is the little thing that eats whatever it can. Um, oh so, right. Yeah, we 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 saw it kind of chasing a toad uh, with like its mouth. Look, I don't expect in a Nintendo Direct to hear the word gaping too frequently, <laughs> but it did happen in this Super Mario Brothers Wonder Direct. Also, uh, uh, we're now learning the natural predators of toads, and Mama's includes that. You're yeah, inter- right. you're introducing. T- uh, toads from one ecosystem into an ecosystem to which they are not uh, regularly in, and there's a whole yeah. brand new set of predators that right. uh, are ready to take toads out at any moment's notice. It's like Jurassic Park. And then, you know, but uh, if you were worried that you weren't going to see some of your Mushroom Kingdom favorites, they're there too. Goombas, Koopa Troopas, Boos, Lockatoos, and more will also be included. So there's just a whole slew of uh, enemies trying to get at Mario and friends. Uh, and of course they promise of, uh, and even more enemies that we can't show you here. Um, so, you know, that's uh, these like dozen or so baddies aren't, aren't the only uh, enemies that we're going to meet. Uh, next up, Mark, we were waiting for this because we wanted, we had questions about the elephant power up. Uh, we're going through the power ups. Turns out everyone can use these elephant power ups except the Yoshis and the Nabbit. Yes. So we won't get to see, a Yoshi transform into another animal. Right. Or into Phil Rosenthal, which was uh, <laughs> what we were speculating before. Yeah, that's right. Uh, because uh, Yeah. Oh, uh, I just thought I would explain that. Because the, think- <laughs> the thinking was that if, um, like, uh, the human characters or and toads 
could turn into an animal, is it only fair play if uh, Yoshi's power-up would be that it turns into a human? And that human right. would, of course, uh, be peak uh, human form in uh, Phil Rosenthal, yeah. producer of right. Everybody's Got Raymond. Everybody loves uh, Raymond. Everybody loves Raymond and star and producer of Somebody Feed Phil, yeah. uh, which is excellent, by the way. Check out Somebody Feed Phil. Great show. Um, so uh, learned a little bit more about the elephant power-up. Um, uh, Mario, Luigi, the Toads, the princesses, and uh, that's all of them. Um, can turn into this elephant where they can swing their trunk around, uh, which, you know, kind of a normal, like, swinging your cape around, swinging your raccoon tail around, damaging enemies. Um, but it also looks like uh, you can use it to deflect projectiles coming your way. Um, you can use the the trunk to suck up water that you can then spray other places. It makes uh, the, the character into kind of a bruiser that they can run through some blocks um, and uh, run over, um, like, dash over sort of larger um, pit areas. Um, all in all, it looks like it'd be, it's going to be super fun to be the elephant. Yeah, and also interesting uh, compared to, like, the um, cat power-up, it, you're actually transforming into an elephant. It's not like a costume or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Is that what's happening with Mario? Because he also, like, he adopts cat behaviors when he's in the cat costume. That's true. Uh, that's true. But I guess it, he, like, retains his face, right? They retain their he faces. Do, yes. They yeah. do retain their faces, yeah. Here they're that just is going, true. They're just going full elephant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, ne next we see the, uh, the bubble power up. Uh, and I gotta say, this is a, a pink looking power up. Mario's wearing pink. It's good. It's very good. And it seems like it's going to be super powerful because you could shoot them as projectile at enemies. And so even like enemies that normally don't die, like, um, the, like a dry bones. Yeah. Dry bones. They get sucked up into a, a bubble and turn into a coin. Um, you can use it to jump so you can jump on the bubbles to reach like i'm very excited about this yeah like it just seems uh like a a, a cool addition uh and then there is the uh the drill power up where the uh, mario gets a little drill on the top of his head um this one seems very versatile right like they showed a lot of different uh, uh applications of this power in action um sometimes it is just like drilling through blocks in front of you sometimes it is uh you know, drilling into blocks below you. You can also drill into like the ground below you and sort of like tunnel um, and also into the ceiling. So there's going to be a lot of different like things to have to wrap your head around with this drill power up, which seems very cool. And then there's also the return of some classics. Uh, I guess really they just call out one, which is uh, the fire power up. Right. The fire flower. Yeah. Um, yeah. The weird thing they, weirdly, they don't call it a fire flower. They just, they just call, call it, it like fire. Fire. Yeah. Interesting. Um, I mean, it. I I noticed that we didn't see any like uh, like I, I don't think there's small versions of these characters. Like I, I don't think, think there's. I think we do see small versions later oh, when they're talking small? about okay. like races. Like you do. You. Mm. I th I think okay. that's my memory. Uh, but but they don't show us a, like a, a mushroom power up, right? And like yeah, that's true. Um, and you know maybe that's all part of uh, maybe there's a different flower based power up that turns you from little to big because uh, we're no longer in the mushroom kingdom we're in the flower kingdom Mark that's right that's right um uh, and then what is this item balloon oh uh, yeah note so that we have here? similar to Super Mario World ah. uh, for the Super Nintendo you can uh, at, get an additional item and kind of like store it. So uh, on the in the UI, it shows you, you know, like uh, the character you're playing as and how many lives you have. And underneath that is a little like a uh, circle with an A button next to it. So that's where you can store yeah. an item. And if you want to like use that item, then you press A and it drops down and you can run over and pick it up. So similar to how that right. works in uh, Super Mario World. A and in like most modern Mario games, right? Like, oh yeah, that's uh, right. It's it, it's like that in the 3D world and uh, Bowser's Fury games, which I have played as recently as this weekend. <laughs> so, um, and then Mark, we get the Wonder Flower, um, which we had seen before uh, without, I would say, fully understanding it. Right? Um, we had seen before that like you touch the flower and it makes the pipes go crazy. Right? Um, which like. There's something kind of fun about like, oh, it just makes like the world kind of a wavy, uh, trippy place. Um, but it seems like the one the uh, the wonder effect is uh, highly context specific. 
um, and will be different for each level where you encounter one. And the effects are hugely variable. Yeah, in fact, your character could transform into something. And the way that you end all of this is by collecting a wonder seed. So somewhere when you uh, grab a wonder flower and the world gets a wonder effect, somewhere in there, there is a wonder seed for you to find and grab. And once you grab it, the course will return back to normal. So I don't know. I, I th this, and this is also like where everything starts to look uh like cool and, and unique and uh you know off the uh sort of beaten path of the like uh, biomes that we previously described i'm very excited to see what all of these uh wonder effect areas are are like yeah totally it also uh i mean not to potentially spoil the end of a game i haven't played but uh sure. you think you think you're gonna have to grab like a giant wonder seed or something to maybe you have to like go inside of bowser who is now a castle and Whoa. like in his guts is a wonder seed that you're going to have to collect, and that, like, turns Bowser back to normal. I love it. I love it. I would, I would play that. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, so next up, we get a look at the badges. And this, to me, feels like kind of the biggest change or unexpected change for me in, like, a 2D Mario formula are yes. these badges, which you earn them in-game, and they are kind of like power-ups like it's almost uh you each badge has a different ability so they show off ones like the grappling vine that you can use to throw like connect with a wall and then um uh pull yourself to that wall there's the safety bounce which lets you like bounce off things once including dun, lava dun, 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 dun. <laughs> including lava it looks like yeah. um and you can equip one at a time you equip them before you go into a level uh, I don't know. It seems like, and it looks like there's going to be a lot of them. The possibilities here just seem totally crazy. Yeah. Well, and it, it makes me wonder if, uh, cause the, the, they've done like badge like things in the, um, the more recent Yoshi games, like Wooly World definitely had this. Um, and, uh, I believe Crafted World did too, um, where you would, you could, uh, like equip something where like, you know, you get more height on your, uh, flutter kick, um, or, uh, you know, uh, uh, unlimited eggs or whatever. Um, and uh, these seem like that, um, but there were never, like, challenges within the levels that, like, required you to use them or, like... Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm just curious to see, like, how this is balanced um, if it is just, like, that you could comfortably play the whole game without ever engaging any of the badges or if, like, there are going to be times where you either need to or, like, you are greatly benefited by, by doing so. Yeah, it will be interesting to see because because there are so many of them, unless they p specifically place some in front of you that it's like, hey, you're required to earn this badge, so we're going to make you earn it before you can advance any further. That that seems like the only way they could do it. It almost feels like just another like balancing technique and yeah. also just a way for people to break the game with speed runs. Yeah, totally, totally. And, well, and, and I mean, honestly... A lot of them just sound like fun, right? Yeah. Like, um, there there's one where it's like a an improved wall bounce with like a a, a wall climb bounce where I, I think it maybe doesn't make you jump away from the wall right away as you're uh as you're as you're uh, wall jumping, um, which uh could be, I don't know, I just it, that that feels like a fun thing to mess around with. Next up, we learned about local co-op and online play. Local co-op is not changed very much from, uh, like, the new Super Mario Brothers games. So when a player dies, like, if you're playing, you can play with up to four people locally. And when one person dies, now instead of bubbling in, they turn into a ghost, which I think is adorable. The little it's ghost funny, versions yeah. of all the characters. Yep. And so the ghost, like, flies around and has a countdown. Um, so they're, they are only in ghost form for a certain amount of time before they completely disappear. and uh, another player just has to touch them for them to come back into the game. And if they successfully do that, you don't lose a life. Yes. Um, and this is going to be very nice for, you know, I mean, just like a lot of the things in previous uh, multiplayer Mario games where uh, having multiple people in there and like attempting uh, one like tricky jump area or something over and over again um, to just like wait and, you know, respawn each other. Um you know, I'm I'm glad to see that kind of thing continue here. But what's interesting here, at least from what we've seen, it uh doesn't seem like 
like with b- bubbles in New Super Mario Brothers, you could just choose to bubble at any time. Yeah, that's true. And right. I don't think that's the case here. I think you have to. I would think not. I don't think you can just become a ghost at will. That seems wrong. Seems unlikely. Um, I- unless the unless the like little worm is actually little worm prince is actually like a leech, and you just like ask him to suck your blood real fast, and that's how you can like you know. If you want to turn okay. into ghost form. Okay, all right, all right. So you you ask a prince. I was looking for his name. It's like Florian. Uh, Florian. Uh, become, becomes a leech and sucks all your blood, and you die and become a ghost. <laughs> That's a way it could be done, yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> Online play is a little more... It's not comp, not necessarily complicated, but just uh, not what I was, not what I was expecting from online play. I wasn't really well, expecting there to be online yes. play. I, I would honestly say that the messaging around what the online play includes is uh, confusing. Like, because there are, there, there is a mode here that seems like kind of cool, kind of like Dark Soulsy, um, where like you have a um, passive relationship with like random players um, and you can like help each other out and like leave little signposts. You can leave like a, a Mario standee in place that uh, will revive a ghost. Um, so like helping out people that are not playing at the same time as you. Um, but like, uh, and, and all that's cool. What I want, what I want primarily from uh, like online play for Mario is just the local experience, but online. Right. Yeah. Th- I mean, I guess that's this is should not be an excuse. They should be able to execute this. And yet every time they've tried like with uh, Mario Maker 2, it's been not good, right? And so that's why I'm well, kind of like kind of though because Super Mario 3D World does work online. Oh. Uh, and you can just uh-huh. do it. Uh and we uh, I've I've not done it extensively, but like every time I have done it, it's been fine. Like not a stellar experience, but uh, like you know, just little hiccups here and there. Otherwise, like mostly okay. Well, and like there, so there, there, there is also a uh, a mode where you can play with friends, but they're still ghosts. So I think you're both like running through the level. I don't. I I I have a hard time wrapping my head around what the, is is this still simultaneous play or not? So this is how I understand it is yeah. when you connect with online play generally you on the world map within specific levels you see these live player ghosts so they are other right. they are other players who are in the same world as you are in the same level as you are and they're running around at the same time if you if in this mode and seemingly not in offline mode if you like die you can you become a ghost so you don't just like die immediately and touching another like shadow, like the uh, will bring you back. You can also like share items. Seemingly, who knows how that works? Um, and like you said, you can put these standees that are also collectibles that uh, a a ghost can in a level. So even if you're not there, your standee will still be there. And if somebody's playing an online mode. And if they become a ghost, they can use the stand D in place of like a live player shadow in order to do that. And then there's this like currency, not really currency because we don't think you can spend it, but this thing called hearts that are points that show how much you've helped other players online. Right. And this is a little bit of like a death stranding component, right? Of like where you're building roads and uh, ramps and whatever. uh, And uh, that, other people in uh, online playing the game have access to your roads and ramps and then you can get like likes on them um so yeah there it's it's just an interesting like they're borrowing these like asynchronous multiplayer things for what still sounds like a largely at the same time multiplayer experience right and so that's like general online play and then you can also create a like a room with friends but that is is not you're not you're not really playing together it sounds like there are certain levels that you can race against each other um but the but you're they're still your friends are still ghosts like there is no mode in which you are actually all playing the level and interacting with this world at the same time with i and i again i i don't know if that's 
it actually, I, this is the thing we're all going to need to get, like, hands-on and, like, I, I really get get our, like, tr- t- I don't understand it. Because the way they presented it in the direct was that, like, you can see what levels your friends are in, and then you can go into that level and race them. I think that's, yes, If I th- oh, but only if you have a room. You open a room, and at that yes. point you can see specifically what worlds your friends are in, not just, like, randoms. And then it sounds like only certain levels can you race in. Like there are certain, not every level can you race in. But do you think that the the way that that was phrased in the direct, do you think it's only the certain levels that like your friends are already in or that it's a old, like a finite number of levels in the game that you can do it in? I don't, I, uh, my interpretation was a finite number okay. of levels, but I sure. don't know if that's true or not. Uh, all of which is to say that, like, the sort of plug-and-play multiplayer, um, like, dream of, uh, of, of Mario, not present here yeah. for online, um, but there is <clears throat> something else here, which I think will be fun to mess around with. Um, I just wonder how, uh, I just wonder what that experience is actually going to be like. Yeah, 100%. And that basically wraps up everything that we learned about the game itself. Again, it's out on October 20th, so really not that far away at this point. But there was one more thing, and this also was heavily rumored before the Direct, and that's a OLED Mario Red Edition, uh, Nintendo Switch Special Edition, which honestly looks pretty sick. It's uh, yeah, it looks all, good. It comes out on October 6th. It's all Mario Red with just, like, a small Mario, like, uh, a... Sh- uh, sh- shadow a cutout whatever yeah like a, uh, like a, like a silhouette of of the, like the side of Mario's head um and that that's like in the, on the back of the thing behind uh like where where the um cables come out um and then if you remove that uh you can see some coins on the inside so they're like hidden coins amazing but otherwise it's just it's Mario Red and uh if I hadn't just bought uh, an OLED at the beginning of the year I would 100% I would 100% buy this yeah, I the white better fits the aesthetic of my apartment, um, but in a different world. I don't know. We also have, like, pops of red around here, too. So, it, I don't know. It, it, it would have looked good. But that's it. That's uh, the Super Mario Brothers Wonder Direct. Uh, yeah, and like like we mentioned at the top, seemingly kind of an abrupt ending that they were just like, okay, <laughs> bye. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got no, like, no... Uh, O- opening or closing bumpers or anything like that. Um, yeah. No Nintendo, you know, like representative introducing it. So it, it does kind of feel like this was put together and maybe, you know, with the intention of it being part of something else. And then they decided to just make it its own thing. Yeah, it, it, it is bizarre that way. And like, it's just so funny comparing it to like the 15 minutes we got of uh, Tears of the Kingdom earlier this year where like that was very uh you know the the tone of that and the presentation of that was very human forward right um it, it was Aonuma who was walking, uh, yeah, walking us through uh-huh. it right um and like he was like introducing it was talking through as they he was like playing and showing off the different um uh, uh, abilities and you know we had like a narrator here but you know it wasn't it was a uh, a faceless narrator um, who definitely wasn't, you know, uh, one of the developers or whatever. So, um, yeah, it's just it's very interesting to see the different ways that they present information on different kinds of games. Uh, do do you? Mi- I I sort of miss the like the human component, um, but there's also something fun about the no nonsense. We've got 15 minutes. Let's show you as much of this game as we can. Yeah, totally. And I've got to say, I'm really. I mean, it's a new. 2D Mario game. I'm very excited yeah. for this. And even though in this 15 minutes they showed us a lot, you know that there's a ton of stuff that we haven't seen. And ton of stuff. I'm just really excited for what this uh, game is gonna hold. Um. All right. Uh. Mark, let's close out this conversation. That is going to do it for this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. What did you think of the Super Mario Brothers Wonder Direct? We would love to hear your thoughts you can email us at nintendo cartridge society at At gmail.com or get in that discord uh and be (coughs) talking talking about it there i'm sure we're going to be uh rolling over this footage for a while thank you so much to our 16-bit patrons connor mccabe and patrice uh millette we appreciate you so very much anthony deluca made our logo our theme music is provided by ape betty you can get more of his music by going to ape betty.com or by listening right now (laughs) 
For my co-host, Mark Mitchell, this is Patrick Ellers saying thank you for listening.